मेरा कौन कर रहा है अरे ना ना हाँ Good evening, everyone. I am Lassie, one of the OET and IELTS trainers working with Dynamic Health Star. For today's session, I have taken the topic related to OET writing, that is, selection of relevant keys notes and organization of the same when you are writing the letter. So, before moving to the topic, I just want to give an insight about our academy. So, examination results have proved that. Western learners are scoring much better than the traditional learners. So this made the DHS one of the Asia's biggest and ultimate virtual training partner with proven. Good lessons. evening, everyone. I am Lassie, when it comes to our training, we have a trainers working with dynamic health in which Monday to Saturday, we have to open to practice OET writing. And that is the selection of relevant keys notes and organization and, uh, of the same record all writing. the sessions and uploading it in so a before time, moving to the so topic, that we can share just it with our registered candidate about our we academy. are conducting mock test every so examination every thursday that and we are professional learners are scoring are scoring via mail much better than the and the, the sessions are 100 percent interactive so even this made the, the new sessions one of the we are taking care of and the other candidates training partner with proven good lessons. evening everyone we'll be providing a constant and high strength trainers उसमे much better along with that and, uh, we are providing the sessions are the sessions so this made the new sessions we are taking care of the elderly there we record our videos with proven regarding on the board will be providing the constant information and high strength practice in the dynamic which will be when you are registering and the talk about your goals getting right so there is the sessions are having the keys now and how will be getting the community support in the regarding on the sessions So before we have the other lights, we just want to suggest to the candidates as I am about our academic and more test so examination is to be Thursday that and we are professional learners who are via me much better along with that we are providing so this is the session just to be an examination is a good session for the learners and the candidates the total time given for the writing on Saturday will be provided in consideration and I am so and that is the final you are supposed to be the session and the talk about
Good evening, everyone. I am Blessy, one of the OET and IELTS trainers working with Dynamic Health staff. For today's session, I have taken a topic related to OET writing, that is selection of relevant keys notes and organization of the same when you're writing a letter. So before moving to the topic, I just want to give an insight about our academy. So examination results have proved that distant learners are scoring much better than the traditional learners. So this made the DHS one of the Asia's biggest and ultimate virtual training partner with proven results. When it comes to our training, we have unlimited practice hours in which Monday to Saturday, we are taking all the four modules practices. And the trainings are happening in Zoom platform, and uh, we'll record all the sessions and uploading it in a Google Drive so that we can share it with our registered candidate. We are conducting mock tests every week on every Thursday, and we are providing the result via mail. And uh, the sessions are 100% interactive. Even if it is a group sessions, we are taking care of every candidate's concern. We'll be providing a rapid revision section twice in a month prior to the examinations, which will give an idea to the candidate about all the modules. So there we will be sharing the tips and tricks and how they have to prepare uh, the day before the examination. We have interactive e-capsules for mock tests, assignments, and also for classworks. Along with that, we are providing soft skills sessions and also 24 into seven support of LMS is there. Their pre-recorded videos regarding all the modules will be mentioned. Uh, some explanations videos are there, orientation videos are also there. So when you are registering with Dynamic Academy, you will be getting the access to this LMS. You will be getting the community support 24 into seven from the CRM team and uh, we are conducting live shows every Friday. Now we can move to our today's topic. So for the people who are uh, listening to this particular topic, I'm just giving them an introduction. What is OET writing subtest? So the total time given for the writing sub subtest is 45 minutes. So in that first five minutes, you are supposed to only read the question. So during that time, you are not allowed to take any of the uh, pencils or pen with you. You can have your question paper with you and you can just plan your writing. So after that, they will be providing you 40 minutes to write your task, that is letter writing. When it comes to writing subtests, it is profession specific. And for writing a letter, you will be getting case notes. That is a related document uh, to write a letter to any of the recipient that is given in your writing task. So whenever you get a case note, main three things you have to do it. One is selection of relevant case note to include in your letter, organize the notes appropriately for your letter, transform the notes into grammatical language. So in this session, we are going to uh, know more about the selection and the organization of the case notes and your letter. So first thing is selection of relevant case notes. So what all things are important or what all things you have to know before you select a relevant case note? In that first thing is who is receiving your letter? Otherwise, we can see who is going to read your letter. So this information will be provided in the writing task, which is there at the end of the case note. Always, you will find the writing task at the end of the case notes. So whenever you get the question paper, first thing you have to do is you have to read the writing task so that you will be getting an idea who is receiving your letter. Second information is, does the recipient of the letter already know the patient? 
Otherwise, we can see that whether this is a known case or an unknown case. This information is also given in the writing task or you will be getting some supporting information in the case notes to find out whether it is a known case or an unknown case. And the third information is what they will do to the patient in future. They means the recipient. So you will be getting this information either from the writing task or discharge plan. Sometimes this information will be there in both writing task and discharge plan. As I mentioned, the first information that you want to know is who is your reader or the recipient. So there are uh, some possible readers uh, name I've given here. So one category is nurses in that you will be getting different positions like uh, you are supposed to write a letter to a community nurse, school health nurse, mental health nurse or some nurses working in some specialty clinics like cardiac clinic or diabetic clinic. Then uh, sometimes you will be asked to write a letter to the rehabilitation center nurse, agency nurse, home care nurse, and district nurse. Then other recipient is doctors. So in that category, you will be getting either GPs, uh, psychiatrists, cardiologists, neurologists, orthopedic doctor, or orthopedic surgeon, and a lot many other. Then some other recipients are like occupational therapist, music therapist, a dietitian, pharmacist, social worker, podiatrist, and sometimes you will be getting some non-medical professionals also. Then how to identify the case from writing notes, whether it is a non-case or an a non-case. So if you want to know this is a non-case, there are certain clues will be given. For example, uh, it is mentioned like this, discharging back into the care, like discharging back into the nursing home, discharging back into the aged care home or retirement home. That means the patient is already a resident in these particular homes, like nursing home, aged care home or retirement home. And the patient got admitted to the hospital where we are working as a nurse for some procedure or uh, due to some medical condition. So after hospitalization, patient has recovered well and patient is getting discharged back into the same care where they are already a resident. So such cases are considered as non-cases. Then some other keywords like his or her GP, his or her doctor. Sometimes uh, the patient's name and uh, they will be seeing that patient's doctor. For example, if the patient's name is Peter, they will be saying Mr. Peter's doctor or Mr. Peter's GP. So these all things are clues for you to find out that is a non-case. And family doctor, it's an exception. It can be a non-case or it can be an unknown case. So if it is family doctor or family GP, we have to check the case, not for further details. Uh, sometimes some other clues will be given in the case note to find out whether this family doctor knows this patient or not. When it comes to unknown cases, most of the referral letters and transfer letters are considered as uh, unknown cases until and unless any of the uh, uh, information related to the known is given. Then if it is seen in your writing task that you have to write a letter to local GP, so that is considered as unknown case. Now we'll move to the second part that is organization of your writing. So whenever you are organized, organize logically. Logically divide your information into paragraphs. And it is very important that the most relevant so we will be already selecting relevant information in that most relevant and least relevant will be there so most relevant details should be prioritized at the top of the letter and the least relevant should be at the last and another thing is that we'll be uh, organizing the relevant keys not into paragraphs and the paragraph should contain only single thing. For example, if you're writing a paragraph which is mentioning about the present medical history of the patient, you are not uh, allowed to write social history in that paragraph. If you want to 
uh, include a social uh, history in that particular letter you have to make a separate paragraph for that okay that is meant by paragraph should contain single theme so when it comes to organization you can follow two uh, different ways one is arranging the information in the order of importance or arranging the information chronologically in some case not we can see the case notes are given or the notes regarding the patients are given in the form of uh, timeline some timelines are given uh, sometimes some date wise it is given like first visit second visit third visit like that it will be given so in that case you can go with the uh, chronological arrangement otherwise uh, we can follow the first that is arranging in uh, information in the order of the significance so here i've taken two letters to explain how we can select the relevant case note and how we can organize so the first letter is uh, about mr walter pitman so first thing is you have to read the writing task and you have to find out three details that we have mentioned one is whether it is a non case to whom we are writing and what is the reason for writing or what the recipient has to do for the patient so when it comes to writing task you can see write a referral letter to the family gp dr lacrizel newtown 2137 asking him to do a full cardiac assessment and management of mr pitman's hypertension so this is the writing task so here you can see uh, we are writing a letter to the family gp and the gp's name is given dr lacrizel so that is our reader and that is our recipient then when it comes to uh, the next part you can see we are asking him to do a full cardiac assessment and management of mr pitman's hypertension that means this is the task that the recipient has to do that is the purpose of writing why we are writing this letter is given the reason is given we are asking for a full cardiac assessment and management of mr pitman's hypertension and as i already mentioned family gp is given so you have to check for some other details in the case not whether it is a non case or a unknown case when we come to this uh, particular uh, case not letters case not you can see in the patient history it is given present history accidental cut injury when using hand saw for cutting wood referred by family physician for further care that means uh, the gp or the family physician knows this patient knows the condition of the patient so we will be taking this letter as a non case so when you take the letter as a non case we can immediately eliminate certain things from the case not one is the social history if it is a non case we are not supposed to write the social history social history contents are irrelevant and the second thing is the past to medical history or past to medications if it is a non case we can eliminate these two information social history and past medical histories only thing the recipient is unaware about the care or uh, the procedure happened during the hospitalization or what all care we have given to the patient during the hospitalization so that things should be written in our letter so in this letter also same thing uh, we will be eliminating the social history and also the medical history uh, the past to medical histories so as we have already seen the writing task why we are writing so we are writing this letter to the gp to assess the patient further assessment is needed for the patient for hypertension so when you look onto the past history of the patient you can see hypertension is there so we can keep that part there because the present history and the past history have a connection other old things like family job habits and also that overweight things we can eliminate it we don't want to look onto that anymore okay then we can decide to the uh, next part what all things are needed so when we write a letter we know that we have a layout so in that 
one part is the subject line there we'll be writing re regarding regarding whom we are writing so for that we need the patient name and age so that will be the relevant thing and when it comes to admission date and discharge date here we can check whether it is relevant or not then present history we have already seen uh, currently, the patient got admitted to the hospital where we are working as a nurse because of an injury or the cut happened using a hand. So, and the family GP knows it. Okay, that is one condition here. And the second condition of the patient here is about the hypertension. So, you can see here it is given in a chronological order. Dates are given. Okay, first date given is second, then third, four, six, eight, eleven, and fourteen. So last date is given as fourteen. That day's assessment we can see his BP elevated, and question mark is given. That means uh, the condition is not yet diagnosed. It's just an assessment only. That means we are suspecting that he has this orthostatic hypertension. So for that reason only, we are sending the patient to this particular. GP for the further assessment. So the second condition which is important here is a hypertension. That means we have selected two condition of the patient. One is about the wound and other thing is about the hypertension. And we know that the purpose is related to hypertension. So that is the most important information in this letter. That means information related to the hypertension should come first after the introduction paragraph okay so we'll be writing the introduction in that introduction we have to mention the full name of the patient then why we are writing what is the reason for writing this letter and the present condition so here we know the full name of the patient is mr walter pickman and the purpose we got it from the writing task that is we are asking for uh uh, asking him to do a full cardiac assessment. That means you can see uh, the patient, that particular patient, Mr. Pittman, requires a full cardiac assessment and management of his hypertension from this GP's practice or uh, from this facility, physical, um, uh, fa sorry, fa family physician's facility. Okay. So that purpose also will be mentioning in the introduction. And the next thing is present condition. What is the present condition that we will be getting from the last visit? That is, he is suspected to have orthostatic hypertension. Okay. So if you are including these three details in the introduction, you will be getting 2 or 2.5 in the purpose criteria. Okay, so always make sure that you are writing a specific purpose and the purpose should be very clear to the reader. Then after the purpose, we will be writing the body paragraphs. So body paragraphs, there is no limitation like number. Uh, we can have two body paragraphs, three body paragraphs or four. But make sure that you will be writing only one introduction and one conclusion paragraph. Conclusion paragraph will be always requesting the recipient what they have to do uh, to the patient. Okay. So in the body paragraphs, we will be mentioning the background information. We have already selected the background information. One is regarding hypertension and other is regarding the wound. So even though the doctor, the family physician knows that the patient got a cut, we want to inform him what is the current status of the wound, but it's only the secondary thing. Initially, it should be about the hypertension. So in the first bo body paragraph, you have to mention about the hypertension. And second body paragraph, you have to briefly explain about the wound. And when, it come, when we write about the hypertension, you can see here a lot many values are there. So when it comes here, uh, initial value is given. So initially, that is on second. Second, uh, we found out that the blood pressure was high. Uh, while sitting and supine position, both values are given. And when it comes to this admission date, you can see the patient got admitted in uh, on uh, 0, 01 and uh, discharge is on third. That means second means patient is currently hospitalized. So you can see initially during hospitalization, what was the blood pressure value? What was the blood pressure value? You can write it down. 
then when you check on to the other things and on third he got discharged and he was asked to come uh, for some visit to a clinic clinic which is related to this particular hospital so he visited next things next dates given is his visits so when you check on to this 4 6 8 11 and 40 so the values i have already eliminated this values because that is not necessary here it's not relevant here because when it comes to last day you can see what is the assessment bp is elevated so we don't want to simply write the uh the uh, in between values here you can see four six eight so when it comes to mathematics we call it as a consecutive numbers so we can write on consecutive days his blood pressure was still high only that is needed and the last value last value means it is on 14th when we are writing the letter so what is the value we can mention sometimes in some case not uh, the initial value and the last value will be same in that case you can see, uh, write it as it was it was same as the initial value here it is both are different so you can give both values okay so that is the structure so only these things you have to mention in the first body paragraph so either you can start with the initial visit consecutive visit and final visit or you can start with final visit initial visit and consecutive both if you're writing in both way it is correct only okay both organizations are correct then in the next paragraph we have to briefly mention about the wound so as we have seen uh, the receiver already know about the wound so we can write as you are aware uh, he got admitted uh, due to so and so things and uh, we can see uh, what were things we have given to him his wound was cleansed sutured dressed well and uh, prophylactic uh, antibiotics were given and when it comes to last you can see today it is wound healed well so other things in between what were things we have uh, given it's not that much relevant we can just brief it like uh, the wound was uh, uh, daily dressed or daily dressings were given or performed you can write and uh, presently wound healed well wound has healed well like then you can just write the uh, second body paragraph then the last is the conclusion so again you can we have already mentioned the uh, purpose in the introduction so don't use the same words that you have already used in the introduction you can restate the purpose or paraphrase we can write in another words don't change the information and we can request it okay this is the organization of this particular letter hope you have understood the other letter of walter pitman so i have taken another one more letter that is miss olivia have thrown so here uh, we can look on to the writing task so using the information given in the case notes, write a letter of referral to Dr. Shah and she is a consultant obstetrician for further investigation. Address the letter to Dr. Miriam Shah, consultant obstetrician, Royal Hospital, Lota. So here you can see the recipient. We have found out the recipient. Recipient name is given, Dr. Sh uh, Miriam Shah, and she is an obstetrician. And why we are writing is given for further investigation, purpose of writing. So uh, it's given uh, only further investigation. We don't know what is the background information. So to get a clear picture, you have to check the last part of your case note. That means just above your writing task. So I will show the letter again. So this is the writing task. Above that, it is on sixth. So the content that is given in the six, we have to check. So you can see here, again, that same plan is given, refer to OB, obstetrician or a gynecologist for further investigation plus an ultrasound. Why? The reason is given uh, something, suspicion is there. It's not a diagnosis that is IUD shifted or fallen out. Okay, and when you uh, go through the first part, you can see removal of IUD and successful 
attempted for 15 minutes. Unable to locate strings, patient cannot recall last time strings located. That means today the patient, this is the last date given in the case not so that will be the uh, date of your letter writing. So uh, why the patient came? Patient came for the removal of intrauterine device, but actually uh, it was unsuccessful. Uh, the nurses, uh, those who have uh, performed this one, they couldn't able to find out or the, locate the string and the patient is, uh, uh, she can't recall uh, where this uh, string was located. So we are suspecting that the IUD has either shifted or fallen out. For that reason, we are asking for the further investigation and ultrasound for this particular patient. Then next thing we have to find out whether it is a non-case or an unknown case. Here nothing is mentioned. Uh, no, any clues are given. We have to check the case not also. So nothing is mentioned related to that. It is a non-case. So we'll consider this as an unknown case. So when it comes to this letter, you can see uh, some information. So now we can go through this. Uh, case not. So you can see uh, the patient's details given. Uh, Olivia have thrown the name of the patient and date of birth and age is given. Uh, address, social background, family history, medical histories, medications, uh, reason for present. Here also you can see treatment record is given the form of a timeline, chronological order. So the treatment record starts from 2007 and the current year is 2019. So we have already seen what is the present condition, why we are asking for a further investigation. So that is uh, about IUD uh, uh, removal. Okay. So IUD removal was unsuccessful for that reason we are referring. So first we have to analyze what all informations are needed, what all things are relevant. So first thing you have to ask a question yourself. Since the patient came for an IUD removal, when this IUD was inserted, that is an in important information. When this IUD was inserted. And the second thing is for what it is inserted. When this IUD is inserted and for what reason it is inserted. These two informations are very relevant in this letter. This obsessed region want to know these two details uh, significant. Okay. It is very, very important. Then we can check whether any other details are needed for this particular recipe. First thing we have to find out. So um, uh, I'm skipping one part that is after reading the writing task, you have to go through the case not once. Okay. Then only you will be coming to the selection of. So that we'll be getting an idea. So first thing we have to find out when this IUD was inserted. So when you go through this, you can see uh, here in the first page, last line on 10 4 that is four years ago, uh, this IUD coil inserted. So that is an important information. Why it was inserted? Because her menorrhagia returns with menstrual cycle. Then you have to go back. We have to know about menorrhagia, when it started. This IUD was inserted for menorrhagia. And when this menorrhagia started, the background information you have to check. So when you come to the medical history, first you have to check it in the past medical history, whether it is mentioned or not. You can see it is given 2009 menorrhagia and this menorrhagia diagnosed. So when you come to the treatment record also, you can find out that exact date was given on April 21st, 2009, menorrhagia and dysmenorrhea diagnosed, menstrual bleeding for 10 days, and she was prescribed with some medication. So initially she came uh, or she was diagnosed with that, uh, this menorrhagia and dysmenorrhea on a particular visit. This is a visit only. Uh, you can see here uh, the patient at your practice. So that means it's a clinic uh, in a GP practice or something. Uh, so you're working as a nurse there. So it is like a visit only. 
so uh, when she visited on 21st so she visited with what 10 days history of menstrual bleeding so on that particular day uh, she was diagnosed with menorrhagia and dysmenorrhea so that information is needed okay then you can see uh, the information is related to this menorrhagia and dysmenorrhea we have to mention so when it comes to this medication two medications she started but already it is given uh, it was ceased and now we are writing in 2019 and these medications were prescribed and seized on 2011 and 2013. So the name of the medication is not that much important. You can write, uh, she was given certain medications, uh, she was uh, uh, treated with the medications and uh, she seized it or she stopped the medication to conceive. Uh, her first and second baby. You can see when it comes to the social background, she have two sons. And that one happened in 2011, other in 2013. So that information, you can just briefly write it. No need to explain. Uh, like some people will explain like on, to, uh, on 22nd, 4, 2011, uh, they started and ceased. No need of that timeline there just give a brief idea okay only that is needed one or two sentences enough and when it comes to when she start uh, when this uh, coil was inserted so that day she presented with menorrhagia uh, where uh, she had a relapse of this condition and uh, on uh, 2018 uh, her menorrhagia improved but uh, and no more dysmenorrhea, uh, no menstrual be bleeding. Uh, since uh, fitting vaginal thrush is there, so patient was treated with so and so medication uh, that you can uh, mention. And uh, when it comes to the present, present is on 2019. You can see the first two visit was on second. There she was uh, means she presented with three months history of menstrual spotting along with she have some other conditions also she had menorrhagia and dysmenorrhea uh, that was the past event along with that she had increased hairiness and increased the greasiness of skin that is important and kinestin you can mention and on that particular visit uh, they have asked her to uh, go for the removal of iud with the help of a nurse so she came after four days that is today and these all things happened. Okay. So these are the important information that we have to include in this letter. So here, when it comes to organization, first in the introduction, we'll be writing the full name of the patient. Uh, here, the full name is Miss Olivia Haftron. Then purpose, you have to mention purpose. Uh, it is further investigation you can take. Further investigation for what? Present condition present condition is uh, this IUD is suspected to fall or uh, shifted. So we are asking for the further investigation. And uh, in the first paragraph we have to mention, we have to give a brief uh, idea about the purpose. Purpose is uh, that when she came for the removal, uh, it was unsuccessful. All that details you have to mention along with the present medical history. Then in the second body paragraph, you can mention the supporting medical history. That is the past event when she was diagnosed with menor uh, menorrhagia and dysmenorrhea. All these details, you can mention it. Then when it comes to conclusion, you have to request. Here, one more thing that we haven't mentioned in the introduction, that is ultrasound. So when it comes to the conclusion paragraph, you can mention that also along with the further investigation or uh, for further investigation, they have to do an ultrasound. Okay. So this is the organization. This is the way we have to uh, select the relevant case knot and write in an organized way. So hope you have understood. If you have any queries, you can contact any of the trainers in Dynamic Health staff. And you can see the number here. You can contact that number for uh, the classes and everything. So when it comes to our classes again, we have flexible timings. 
you can choose your timings according to your availability uh, either you can choose morning noon evening or night time and you will be getting non-stop practices all day long and there is no restrictions at all to attend the sessions if you are available for uh, available for all the four sessions you can attend it we won't restrict you and why you want to choose dhs as i mentioned we have virtual sessions so wherever you are uh, staying you can attend from there at your own comfortability and you will be getting 24 into 7 lms support and we'll be having unlimited practice hours and we'll be providing ebooks also for mock tests and for assignments and all for class works and you will be getting unlimited mock test support you will be provided with the uh, scorecards in mail and uh, we are providing assignments and uh, we'll be providing all the support for your examination zones so uh, you can watch our achievers videos in youtube so please subscribe our youtube channel so that you will be getting the up upcoming videos and the previous videos also you can watch it and uh, hope that you will be the next person so start your practices now for any help you can contact uh, this number which is given uh, in the below so these are our mentors so they are experienced and they have a good scores of uh, achievers so they will be helping you throughout uh, the day from monday to saturday to achieve your goals so when you are joining today you will be getting the 24 into extended support of crm unlimited training and also you will be getting a 10% discount hope you enjoyed this session if you have any doubts you can just quote it in the uh, comment section or you can directly contact us thank you everyone